These new batteries are unquestionably the biggest game changer in terms of technology the world has seen in the last 50 years. There is nothing else that changes the game as much as these batteries. Now, it is not necessarily the cost declines, which have been exaggerated. It is actually other things that make them the game changers they are. And obviously the word game changer is overused, isn't it? But in this case, I'm understating. I'm understating the importance of this incredible technology. Cadle have revealed their groundbreaking price for their new sodium ion batteries, which is truly staggering. However, are what these YouTubers have been saying about this battery actually accurate? Has the price come down by 90%? That's what the headlines say. Well, no. Basically, they're all lying to you. Now, don't get me wrong, these batteries are incredible. In fact, they are going to completely change the game globally. BYD, they're in trouble. <laughs> LG Chem, they're in trouble. All these massive battery manufacturers, they're in trouble because their batteries, primarily the batteries they manufacture at BYD more than anyone else, they're obsolete and they're way too expensive on multiple levels in terms of how long they last for. This battery is game changing. It just isn't 90% cheaper than existing batteries. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel. I'm Sam Evans. You're watching The Electric Viking and I'm not gonna mince words in this video. I am a bit disappointed by some of the YouTubers that I personally follow and watch that they've put in some headlines that are clearly false because the cost decline in these batteries, it's not the big deal here. The big deal actually is two other things. Two other things that CITL have done that matter far more than the cost declines, but the cost decline is, is nowhere near 90%. Kate will say they have the potential, the potential to get to $10 per kilowatt hour even if they hit that potential, which is not the case yet, then the cost still won't have reduced by 90%. So if you've watched the YouTube channel telling you this, then sorry, my friends, they've got no idea what they're talking about or they're just bullshitting to get you to click. Cadle has introduced a new sodium ion battery, which to be honest is absolutely amazing, with a potential read potential cost reduction to 10 US dollars per kilowatt hour using sodium's abundance and safety to address energy storage challenges. And to be honest, these batteries, they'll last approximately three times longer than lithium ion phosphate batteries. It's game changing. However, let's assess some reality here. The price is not yet $10 per kilowatt hour, potentially could be in the future. Now I'm guessing it probably will be. Tony Sieber predicted this and Tony usually gets things right. But the price is not yet at that level. It's actually at 19 US dollars per kilowatt hour currently, which is um, nowhere near 90% reduction, considering the fact that lithium ion phosphate batteries at the cell level are around 55 US dollars per kilowatt hour if you order lots of them. Yeah, if you're a, a single buyer, then the, these sodium batteries or the LFP batteries are going to cost you a lot more than that, probably about 100 US dollars per kilowatt hour. But if you're a big buyer, they're around 55. Going from 55 to 19 is certainly not a 90% cost reduction. Now guys, I challenge you to email your favorite YouTubers and I think you know who I'm talking about here and actually give them this information and tell them why they made videos that clearly lie to their watchers, people who are watching their channel. That's what's happened. Anyhow, sodium ion batteries are obviously, well they obviously have one big problem and that is energy density. Energy density when sodium ion batteries came out around 12 months ago, it was around between 100 watt hours per kilogram up to about 120 watt hours per kilogram. That was 12 to 18 months ago. But in that space of time, they've drastically improved. Where the best ones were sitting about 140 to 150 watt hours per kilogram, which is not that far off the energy density of the most common good, as in high end lithium ion phosphate batteries, which is sitting at around 190 watt hours per kilogram. You know, 145 to 150 versus 190, it's still a big difference, but it's getting much closer. However, the new Naxtra sodium battery, it sits at 175 watt hours per kilogram, meaning it is actually a more energy dense battery than BYD's blade battery. 
Now, I'm not, of course, referring to BYD's new blade battery that has a high energy density, um, but that's not even out yet. The high energy density version of BYD's blade battery doesn't even yet exist. We've only got the high charge battery, which is actually the same energy density as this. It's 175 watt hours per kilogram. But this is going to be a lot cheaper than BYD's blade battery and last a lot longer. So how long will it last exactly? Well, Cato says this, right? They say it'll last for up to 3.6 million miles, which sounds incredible, right? It sounds spectacular, and it is. But it's actually better than that. Now, first of all, how far is 3.6 million miles for those of us who live in the metric world where things actually make sense? It's around 5.8 million kilometers. Now, of course, no one in their right mind is ever going to drive a car for 5.8 million kilometers. At least I don't think so anyway. But it would be cool if someone did. However, here's the thing. Cable is saying these batteries will retain an energy density of 85% or more for up to 3.6 million miles. Basically, what this means is that these batteries will last three to six times longer than even lithium-ion phosphate batteries. If you look at a best case scenario, lithium-ion phosphate batteries last for, say, about a million miles, really good ones, some of the newer ones. Uh, that's a lot less than these batteries, these new sodium batteries from Cadill, which not only are they cheaper than lithium-ion phosphate, uh, but they'll also last approximately three times longer. Yeah, I mean, wild. But they'll last around three times longer and still have 85% or more of their original capacity. Imagine all the or imagine all the EV batteries that are going to be sitting around. Yeah, when cars are dead after 20 years, 10 years, 30 years, there will be so many batteries. This will change the entire electrical grid. I mean, if these batteries are the cheapest on the market, which they will be, almost every EV will end up having them, surely, or some variant of them. I mean, other manufacturers will have to look at them, break them down, and make their own versions of these and cost them, price them similarly. Because if they don't price them similarly, then Cato will just take the, well, not the entire market, but the majority of it, yeah? So this puts immense pressure on the entire market to innovate and bring out similar, similar products. Similar products will have to be within the ballpark of the price, the range estimates, and the energy density, or they won't be able to compete. And what this means for the entire EV industry is not only will EVs be much cheaper than internal combustion vehicles, they'll also have a core key part to the car, the battery, which we'll be able to use, which will be able to be used for decades after the car is actually dead. And that will not only change the EV industry, the car industry as a whole, but it will change the entire global energy sector. Not only will basically every single energy company who is currently employing or building out new lithium-ion phosphate batteries, massive ones to replace coal power plants as is happening all over the world, and solar, of course, in, com in combination with these batteries, these companies will be saying to themselves, okay, well, this year we were going to build out $10 billion of batteries. Um, now these new batteries will last three times longer and they're cheaper than our existing batteries, let's double our orders. This makes the biggest difference to not EVs, but actually to the entire global energy industry. Solar is clearly the cheapest form of electricity in the world by a mile. But if you combine solar with salt batteries that can last for, I don't know how long, but an incredibly long time and much longer than today's existing batteries, and the batteries are cheaper, all of a sudden, the energy industry says to themselves, you know what, let's move away from coal much faster and gas than we previously anticipated. Now, if you're not aware of sodium ion batteries and their history, here's the thing. Historically, sodium ion battery technology faced some massive challenges, and it's one of the reasons why most experts said it would never work. Clearly, they were wrong. One of these changes, or one of these challenges, I should say, was lower energy density, shorter lifespan, and higher production costs. These limitations allowed lithium-ion batteries to dominate this market, particularly in compact, high energy applications like electric cars and mobile phones. However, Cadle's recent breakthrough aims to address these issues. 
So what are Cadle's innovations? Well, the main thing we're talking about here today is the Nextra battery pack. The Nextra battery pack achieves an energy density of 175 watt hours per kilogram, an incredibly good energy density. In fact, this is the highest energy density we've ever seen of a mass manufactured sodium ion pack in the history of the planet. And of course, combine that with the price and it's just crazy. The battery is designed to operate reliably in extreme temperatures as well which has been a bit of a challenge for lithium ion phosphate batteries. They usually don't work that well below zero degrees Celsius. They, they, they're okay, but um, newer, about, newer ones have kind of implemented new technology to get around this issue. However, it's still an issue for a lot of lithium ion phosphate batteries. The fact that these work at minus 40 degrees Celsius to up to 70 degrees Celsius means they are the most capable batteries at handling any kind of temperature in the world. In addition, their lifespan will exceed 10,000 charge cycles. And these features make them ideal for EVs and renewable energy storage. The, in addition to revealing the Nextra battery and the price, which was, and the, and the energy density, which were the key things we've just learned, the Freevoy battery system combines sodium ion and lithium ion chemistries using the strengths of both technologies. And that's part of the reason why these batteries haven't come down in price by as much as what some YouTubers are saying. You still do need lithium. Now, I should say the Nextra battery pack is sodium ion, but the Freevoy hybrid system does use both sodium and lithium. This hybrid approach optimizes performance across varying conditions, addressing concerns about energy density and cost while maintaining operational flexibility. By integrating the benefits of both battery types, the Freevoy system positions itself as a practical solution for plug-in hybrids and e-revs. Now, apparently, um, those are the vehicles the Freevoy battery is meant for. But to be honest, no one really cares about the Freevoy battery. It's the Nextra battery pack that everyone is talking about. Cato's claim of achieving a 10 US dollar per Cato's claim of achieving a 10 US dollar per kilowatt hour cost is a dramatic reduction compared to the current, well, some people are claiming 115 US dollars per kilowatt hour for lithium ion batteries. Now, the truth is, like I said before, that's not actually accurate. Lithium ion phosphate batteries, if you order in large quantities, which is what we're talking about with an extra battery too, they're around 55 US dollars per kilowatt hour. However, that's still a lot higher than the potential of 10 US dollars per kilowatt hour that CHL are saying they could potentially hit in a few years time. If this cost target is realized, this will massively lower the price of electric cars and home energy storage systems and make them last a lot longer at the same time. Accelerating the global transition to renewable energy. Affordable energy storage could also enhance the feasibility of grid scale battery systems in every country on the planet, even for those countries that are not part of the Sun Belt, which is actually 90% of the world. Now, despite these massive and incredible cost projections, there is a fair bit of skepticism around. Cadle has yet to provide detailed technical ex explanations for achieving such staggeringly low costs. And I think the reason is because they're just talking about the cell level, not the pack level. The price at the pack level is likely to be different. This does though raise some questions about the scalability and market readiness of sodium ion batteries. We don't know how long it's gonna take before Cato's cost reductions will arrive. I mean, when will these batteries be available at these prices? No one actually knows yet. However, all that said, I believe that these batteries will emerge as the dominant battery type worldwide within the next five years. It is inevitable. I've said this on the channel a number of times, but sodium ion batteries will displace much of the lithium ion phosphate battery market and much of the ternary battery market, as in NCM or NMCA type chemistries, NM type chemistries, and this will be a game changer. Cadle's sodium ion batteries have the potential to disrupt multiple sectors worldwide, including EVs and renewable energy storage. One significant advantage is the ability to adapt lithium ion phosphate production lines for sodium ion manufacturing. You can just use an existing production line. This will accelerate scalability and reduce initial setup production costs. If successful, sodium ion batteries will diversify the energy storage market, reduce reliance on lithium, 
and enhance global energy security. They're also less prone to fire, and as you can see, they'll last much longer. There's some huge advantages here. Affordable and efficient batteries will play a pivotal role in transforming EV adoption, making electric transportation accessible to a much broader audience. The EV transition will actually occur probably much quicker as soon as massive scale production of these batteries ramps up. And basically look at it, look at it this way. If we can reduce the cost of existing batteries in EVs today by say 50% and get them to last three times longer and get them to operate in extreme cold temperatures, places like you know Alaska and Canada and some of the coldest places on the planet. And also they work perfectly well in places like Abu Dhabi, places where it's extremely hot, India, for example. Basically, we're taking out any of the negatives, any of the potential negatives of batteries today. Cost-effective storage solutions will address the intermittency challenges of renewable energy sources, such as solar and wind power, paving the way for a planet which is running off renewable energy and nothing else. This will happen. It's only a matter of how long it will happen. Because of these batteries, it's likely to happen much faster than we previously thought. Cato's advancements in sodium ion technology are unquestionably game-changing. These batteries will be used across the entire market, I believe, and probably dominate the global battery market within five to seven years. If you're invested in a company which is basically making most of its money selling lithium batteries of some kind, I'd be saying uh, maybe within the couple, next couple of years, you change your mind and pivot to something else because the market share will definitely decline. Let me know your thoughts. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.